Hello and welcome to Parasha Express, the weekly fix for spiritual lessons taken from the Parasha. Grab your coffee and let's take a look at the weekly Torah reading. This week we'll be looking at Parasha Hasinu, which runs from Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 1 to verse 52. Enjoy it and don't forget to give us your feedback on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube or via our website. In 2006, Guy Goma, a Congolese taxi driver, walked into the headquarters of the BBC in London for a job interview that would change his life. As reported in the Telegraph newspaper, he was simply looking for a job in IT, but the BBC staff mistook him for Guy Cuny, a technology expert who was due to appear on the BBC News 24 program to answer questions on Apple's legal battle with a record label, and started to get him mic'd up. The penny only dropped after the reporter introduced him. What follows is a hilarious few minutes where Guy the taxi driver attempts to answer specialist questions on complex legal and technological issues. It could well be said that the BBC chose the wrong guy. Guy Gomer's case of mistaken identity actually worked out well in the end. He didn't get the job at the BBC, but he's become famous and has gone on to feature a number, in a number of TV shows in England. He must be happy that he answered the request for a job interview. But enough about Guy, let's take a look at our parasha this week. We've almost made it to not only the end of the book of Devarim, but also to the end of the Torah. The parasha are getting shorter and shorter, and this week we're only looking at one chapter, chapter 32. And it gets even more interesting. Chapter 32 is a song, which God taught to Moses and Joshua and told them to teach it to the people. Yep, that's correct. This week, we're reading song lyrics, some of the oldest song lyrics that were ever written. While analyzing a song can sometimes take away from its beauty, that's not the case with this musical chapter of the Torah. You see, God told the people to learn it and learn it well because it was going to serve as a reminder to them when they entered into the land that he'd given them. Reading through the lyrics, we see that the song is designed to remind the people who God is and who they are. God gets angry at our people because they're constantly trying to follow other gods or because they think that the one true God behaves like their false gods. He chastises them for mistaking him for something false. He also admonishes them for becoming like the nations around them rather than being his representatives, specially chosen for that purpose. And the song doesn't just talk about the past, it's a prediction of what will come to pass in the future once they get settled in the land. Despite our people's case of mistaken identity concerning God and themselves, we also learn that God will be merciful to them and to us, their descendants. That's the ray of hope amidst a rather tragic song. But the real tragedy is that our people have again and again mistaken God's identity. As we read through the Tanakh, we see that they expect him to behave like the false deities of the surrounding countries. At one point in the book of Tehillim, God even exclaims, You thought that I was altogether like you. We've made the mistake of thinking that God behaved like us humans, erratic, impulsive, and selfish. But from our song of Moses, we learn that God isn't like that. He is constantly called a rock, unchanging, stable, and strong. Something to build your life on in a world that is constantly changing. He is a God who hates our wrongdoing because it ruins us in our relationship with Him. It also ruins our identity as a people whom He has chosen to represent Him. And not only have we had mistaken identity issues with our God, we've also had them with the Messiah. Throughout the centuries, false messiahs have come and gone, promising something that they're not. We've had Bar Kokhba as a warlord, Menachem Schneerson as a spiritual leader, and Shabbatai Tzvi as a charlatan. And we've fallen for each of the false messiahs because we've been looking for a messiah that fits our ideas and our pictures, but not God's. In order to deliver us from our physical enemies, God first has to deliver us from our morally bankrupt spiritual condition, our sin. In chapter 53 of the book of Yeshayahu, Isaiah the prophet, or to be more exact, chapter 52, 13 to 53, 12, we read about a certain servant who is rejected by our people. According to the text, we thought he was worthless and was being punished for his own crimes. The prophet tells us that we are completely missing the point and that as we rejected him, he was actually taking on the punishment that we deserve. 
If you've never read this chapter, I encourage you to take your Hebrew Bible and read it for yourself. You'll be amazed at how the details match one-to-one -one with the details in the life of Yeshua of Nazareth. Even the Aramaic Targum speaks of this servant as the Messiah. Our Jewish people have, as a whole, despised and rejected Yeshua. And yet he died so that we could be free from our brokenness and moral corruption and have a new fulfilled life. That's the ultimate case of mistaken identity. We've mistakenly believed in so many false messiahs, but missed the genuine article. But wait, there's more. We've also missed out on who we should be. So often we settle for the images of life that society gives us, and we listen to what people say about us. You're ugly, you're worthless, you're pathetic. Or maybe we swing the other way and think that we're imp more important than we actually are. In either case, we choose to believe the lies that we're told instead of clinging on to our real identity, who we are in God. God has created each of us with a plan, purpose, and a role to play. He's gifted us with talents and skills. We're worth something because of the worth that He has given us. And thanks to the Messiah, our identity is now bound up in Him. If we choose to trust in Yeshua, when God looks at us, He sees the Messiah in us. Wow! If I'm honest, there are many times I've made the same mistake as the BBC did with Guy Goma. I've thought God is one way, when actually, He's another. I've also believed the lies about my own identity. But thankfully, God has always been faithful to correct my vision. He does so daily. What about you? Maybe you thought of God as a grandfather figure not relevant to your life. Or perhaps an angry despot who longs to ruin your life. Perhaps you've considered Yeshua to be a liar or a traitor, or simply a misunderstood martyr. Perhaps you've thought of yourself as God's gift to man, or perhaps as a waste of space. Whatever the case, I encourage you to come to God and ask Him who He is. Read His message to humanity, the Bible, and get to know Him. Ask Him who our true Messiah is. Allow Him to give you your true identity, and don't waste your life living for anything less. Come to Him and find out who you truly are. That's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed our Parashah as a present. Please don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get the latest episodes. We'd love to hear from you, so please get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or via our website at youthenfearjesus.de.